Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Two recent groundbreaking discoveries on the Red Planet suggest that what we thought we knew about this mysterious world may not be accurate at all. And if this is indeed the case, it could have serious implications for future exploration and especially Elon Musk's plans of colonization. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, again, we have discovered recently, or scientists have discovered, shall we say, that what they thought was true about Mars wasn't all that accurate at all in two important regards. Number one, there was a great deal of debate as to just how habitable Mars was in the ancient past. For example, the water might not have had the right composition, the right combination of elements to be suitable for life to exist on Mars. It might not have been as widespread spread or fast flowing. However, we've discovered that that is not the case. The Curiosity rover always seems to be the rover that uncovers the exciting stuff. Well, the Curiosity team has uncovered evidence to suggest that rivers were very widespread on Mars, that Mars was a planet of rivers in the past, and that, combined with all of the other tests that have been carried out, all all of the other discoveries in regards to the existence of current life on the Red Planet suggests that life does not only still exist on Mars, not only does it still survive, but it's far more widespread than we ever thought. And what might be an even greater concern for Elon Musk's future colonists is the existence of powerful earthquakes on Mars. A recent Mars quake, as they call them, detected by the InSight lander right before it went inactive. Well, it was so strong that NASA thought that it couldn't have possibly been created by the Red Planet's geology. Instead, they thought that it had to have been created by some sort of impact. However, that turned out to not be the case. So what do these recent discoveries mean for Elon Musk's ambitions when it comes to colonizing Mars? Might these new discoveries present a new threat to Martian colonists? And if so, what's the best way to survive them? Less than 20 years ago, scientists thought almost universally that Mars was a dead planet. Dead geology, virtually no tectonic activity whatsoever. A planet that had lost the active core that it once had, and therefore the magnetic field that went with it, could not possibly have active geology. Therefore, Mars was a red rock in space, and also a rock that was probably devoid of life because the surface was continuously bathed in radiation. However, recent discoveries suggest that these these assumptions were completely incorrect, which makes you wonder just what else we might be incorrect about when it comes to our knowledge of the solar system, given the fact that Mars is such a nearby planet. Now, the probe that has upended so many of these commonly held beliefs was the InSight lander, which unfortunately is no longer functioning after its solar panels could no longer collect sufficient energy in order to keep it warm and operating. However, while it was in operation, it made some amazing discoveries. The most significant of these took place on May 4th, 2022, on the 1222nd Martian day of InSight's mission, very close to the moment when the probe went out of commission. The quake, also known as S1222A, was five times stronger than any previous earthquake that InSight had observed. It shook the planet at a magnitude of 4.7, which is a moderate quake on our planet, but absolutely gigantic on Mars, and 
the vibrations reverberated through Mars's crust for approximately six hours. Given the strength of this unprecedented quake, the InSight researchers concluded that it must have been caused by some sort of sizable meteor impact. And so, an international team of scientists studied the surface of the planet in great detail, looking for a crater with a diameter of at least 300 meters and a blast zone that would be approximately 180 kilometers across. We're talking about a nuclear-sized blast here and they found absolutely nothing. At this point, the InSight researchers have conclusively proven that this did not come from some sort of meteor impact, but rather from inside the planet itself. Once again, Mars has no active plate tectonics, so this was simply, quote, caused by the release of stress within Mars' crust. These stresses are the result of billions of years of evolution, including the cooling and shrinking of different parts of the planet at different rates. That's according to Benjamin Fernando, team lead of the group that researched this entire project. By the way, this was a collaborative effort between a wide variety of different space agencies across the Earth. We're talking about the Chinese Space Agency, the Indian Space Agency, the United Arab Emirates, NASA, and the European Space Agency. Before it was retired at the end of 2022, InSight recorded 1,319 Mars quakes, and the vast majority of the epicenters came from the region you're looking at right now, the Cerberus Fosse region. By the way, an area that is absolutely loaded with evidence of recent landslides, and that should surprise nobody given how many earthquakes are taking place in the, this area. However, this very powerful quake came from several hundred kilometers away from the Cerberus Fosse, again completely mystifying the researchers. But fortunately, all of these earthquakes gave us a good idea of what the interior of Mars probably looks like. At least this is the most current theory. You start off with the Moho region, or the Moho Rovisisic discontinuity, which is named after the Croatian seismologist who discovered Earth's Moho over a century ago, indicating that there's a change in density in the material between the surface. The lower density crust is above the Moho, and the higher density mantle beneath it. And then at 1140 kilometers down, inside seismic data reveals another discontinuity, which is most likely what's called an olivine wadasilite transition. And man, I'm sure I got that wrong. This is a region where the chemical composition of the mantle changes, and the high pressures and temperatures deeper down in the mantle force chemical and structural changes to a mineral called olivine changing it into another mineral known as Wadasilite. Once again, I'm sure I got all of that wrong. In any event, further down, you have, instead of a solid core as we have within our own planet, a liquid core, and a larger core at least proportionally to the diameter of Mars. So again, a very active interior, just a lot different than our own. And for some reason, no magnetic field. There are regional magnetic fields on Mars, but not a planetary magnetic field. And herein lies the problem. With an active geology and active earthquake activity, you have the potential for landslides in a wide variety of locations across the surface of the planet. Valleys, of course, are a significant hotspot, and there's evidence to suggest that recent landslides have taken place in some of these valleys, especially the Cerberus Fosse region. So, of course, the obvious solution is to avoid these regions, right? Let's just go ahead and build our colonies on flat land. Well, here's the problem with that. Flat areas that are exposed to the sun most of the time also have practically zero protection from solar radiation and cosmic rays, which would be far more problematic than the occasional landslide. Indeed, the Curiosity rover has discovered that Butting up against the side of cliff faces are the best place to go if you want to be protected from Mars' surface radiation. Radiation levels drop off precipitously at the edge of cliff faces. 
curiosity made several readings to suggest that. Indeed, there are many areas on the surface of Mars that are subjected to far less radiation than we might think, but all of those regions are on valley floors in inside canyons, where the avalanche risk might be quite significant indeed. So the other solution, of course, would be to dig underground or go into lava tubes where the radiation can't reach, right? Well, earthquakes could be very problematic there as well. Martian caves and lava tubes, especially the ones we dig ourselves, might be very vulnerable to earthquake activity. And one of the most promising areas to set up a colony, which you're looking at right now, is at the western edge of the Valles Marineris, where there apparently seems to be a hell of a lot of ice just beneath the surface, and also a wide variety of deep valleys which would be very well protected from the radiation, not only by the geography, but also by the atmospheric density. The further down you go into these canyons, the more dense the atmosphere becomes and the more radiation shielding you get. So it may be that when we are looking to set up a future colony, we might also want to research landslide prone areas because also keep in mind, Mars is a very, very dangerous area for landslides because of the relative thin nature of the atmosphere and also the extreme height of some of these canyon walls. The ones that you're looking at right now are as deep as seven kilometers. We're talking four times the depth of the Grand Canyon, meaning that any landslides that plummet down the sides of these things are going to be traveling very, very fast by the time they reach the bottom. We're talking over 700 kilometers per hour based on the research that we've done of past landslides in the Valles Marineris. In addition to that, subsurface ice or the very nature of the Martian regolith also seems to contribute to high velocity landslides. Once again, these are extremely dangerous things, something that we should take very seriously and probably the best solution would be to find canyon walls that are vulnerable to landslides and perhaps trigger those landslides ahead of time before we set up our colonies. But few things would have a bigger impact on future colonization than the discovery of life, and a new analysis of data from the Curiosity rover has revealed that much of the craters on Mars today could have been habitable rivers, and therefore extremely friendly to at least bacterial life and quite probably multicellular life. This is just another discovery from the Curiosity rover, building up a preponderance of data that suggests that not only did life exist in Mars' ancient past, it likely still exists today. Quote, We're finding evidence that Mars was likely a planet of rivers, said Benjamin Cardenas, assistant professor of geosciences at Penn State and lead author on a new paper announcing the discovery. We see signs of this all over the planet. In a study published in Geophysical Research Letters, the researchers used numerical models to simulate erosion on Mars over millennia and found that common crater formations called bench and nose landforms are most likely the remnants of ancient riverbeds, and these formations are all over the planet. This suggests that there could be undiscovered river deposits elsewhere on the planet and that an even larger section of the Martian sedimentary record could have been built by rivers during a habitable period of Mars history, Cardenia said. On Earth, river corridors are so important for life, chemical cycles, nutrient cycles, and sediment cycles. Everything is pointing to these rivers behaving similarly on Mars. Our research indicates that Mars could have had far more rivers than previously believed, which certainly paints a more optimistic view of ancient life on Mars. It offers a vision of Mars where most of the planet once had the right conditions for life. Now, obviously, the existence of numerous rivers is not conclusive proof of the existence of life on the red planet. However, it's just another piece of evidence adding to a huge number of discoveries as of late that suggests that Mars not only had active life in the past, but also widespread and flourishing life currently. 
How do we know this? Well, first of all, Curiosity discovered strange seasonal spikes of methane in the Martian atmosphere, as most of us know. These sorts of spikes can be caused by geological processes, but geology seldom behaves in conjunction with seasons. That's rather something you experience with biological processes. Similarly, Curiosity found that there were seasonal spikes of oxygen in the Martian atmosphere. Once again, there are inorganic organic processes that can cause this, but very seldom does it have anything to do with seasons. And on top of that, you have the famous label release experiments carried out by the Viking landers in 1976. And both of the scientists that headed up those experiments, Dr. Gilbert Levin and Dr. Patricia Stratt, sadly both of them have passed away now, both of them believe that they definitely discovered life back in 1976. By the way, those experiments were the only experiments that NASA ever sent to Mars that were specifically designed to detect life. And if you'd like to know more about these particular experiments, well, I have my interview with Gilbert Levin, one of the last interviews ever conducted with this man, linked at the end of this video. But suffice it to say, that many, many attempts have been made to recreate the label release experiments here on Earth using inorganic processes, and all of these efforts have come up blank. The only thing that creates the kind of results that we got on the label release experiments back in 1976 are organic processes. And by the way, both Viking landers detected the same thing and just a few centimeters down in the Martian regolith. We're not talking about life that has to burrow deep, deep underneath the surface of the planet in order to escape from the radiation. If life existed hundreds of millions of years ago on Mars, it is inconceivable to think that even the most harsh conditions could have wiped all traces of all life off the surface of the planet. There are many species of life, mostly bacterial of course, that could survive in the Martian environment today. If you transplanted these bacteria, most of them extremophiles to the Martian surface right now, they would survive. So why would Martian life not have survived over these past several hundred million years, especially if they had lots of time to adapt to new conditions. And of course, if there's life on Mars, then there's going to be a lot of resistance to establishing colonies there if those colonies would threaten existing Martian life. In my opinion, of course, any life that can survive that much radiation and the perchlorates and the regolith and everything else that exists on Mars would probably be able to survive anything we could throw at it. But nevertheless, it's something that would probably hold up colonization efforts. And not only that, Martian bacteria and Martian viruses might prove to be quite lethal to human beings. That, of course, would also be extremely dangerous to future colonization. So Mars is unquestionably an alien world, a world that has so far defied our efforts to understand it, at least completely, and before we can think about colonizing it, we probably have a lot more exploring to do. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Still trying to get to that 1% threshold, 1% of my subscribers supporting me on Patreon, and a lot of you have joined up recently to try to reach that goal and also please like please subscribe and thank you again for watching because that means the most of all so until human beings are taking their first steps on this alien world i urge all of you to stay angry about space